This video today is going to be talking about slope. You've heard the term slope probably in terms of skiing, like let's hit the slopes, maybe in terms of skateboarding ramps. No matter where, it relates to how steep something is. Slope measures the change in distance up or down per distance moving forward. For example, with this wheelchair ramp in the picture, for every one inch the ramp, ramp goes up in height, you've now gone one foot or 12 inches forward. And that's how we get our measurement. Another example is on a roof, you've heard the pitch of the roof. So in this example, what we're saying is that for every one foot in height of the king post, the tie beam is three foot long. So if we were to double the height of the king post, we'd be doubling the length of the tie beam. Slope can also refer to what's called rate of change in a more application based. So as before, for every change in elevation, maybe of one inch, you've moved forward 12 inches. For every hour you work, you earn another $10 in your paycheck. So that's a rate of change. This is why many financial topics are shown with line graphs to give you an overall of the rate of change. So you think going up, be very happy. Things going down, not so happy. To find the slope, you find two points on a line and determine the change in the y values, which we call the rise, and put that over the change in x values, which we call the run. The slope formula here you can see is m, which we stand for slope, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if you look on the grid and you take a look at the rise, I've dotted a green line kind of makes a right triangle between my two points. Now if you notice on 3, 4, the y value there is 4. If you go down to the next point, if you count down two units, you'll notice you're across from the negative 1, 2 point. So the difference in the y value there is simply 2, 4 minus 2. Whereas the x value, if you take a look at that, so here we are at 3 in 3, 4, and we notice that the line runs all the way to negative 1 on the x-axis, so the difference between 3 and negative 1 we see is 4. So it's just a matter of subtracting the y's over the x's. It is important to remember that whichever point you choose to start with to subtract your y values, you want to start with the same point when subtracting the x values. So let's find the slope of a line that has points 3, 7, and negative 4, 2 on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the y values 7 minus 2 over the x values of 3 minus negative 4. Be very careful when you're subtracting a negative because 3 minus a negative 4 becomes positive 4. So 7 minus 2 is 5, 3 plus 4 is 7. The slope of this line is 3 sevenths. So I chose to start with the first point as my x2, y2. It doesn't matter which point, and I'm going to prove that. I'm going to reverse this, and I'm going to start with negative 4, 2 as my first point. So in this case, I would go 2 minus 7 as my y values and negative 4 minus 3 as my x values. I end up with negative 5 over negative 7, but it still simplifies to be 5 sevenths. Now we're going to compare slopes. So let's first find the slope of line AB here on the left. So calculating my slope, I get 5 sevenths. You'll notice that that line as we look from left to right is going up, and all lines traveling up from left to right have positive slopes, just like line AB has a positive 5 sevenths. Line BC on the right, if we calculate its slope, we're going to get negative 3. Again, taking my points, I started with 3, 7, so 7 minus negative 5 over 3 minus 7 gave me 12 over negative 4, which reduces to 3. So we can see that that line is traveling down from left to right, and it has a negative slope. And that is true of all lines going down as you look at them from left to right. 
Now two lines are parallel, have the same slope. Why is that, do you think? Well, if we think about steepness, then if I was to adjust either of these two lines so that one was steeper than the other, they would eventually intersect. And parallel lines, by definition, are lines that never intersect. We also have perpendicular lines. Now what's special about perpendicular lines? Two lines that are perpendicular must have the slopes whose product is negative one. Or you may have also learned this as that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals of each other. So let's look at an example. If I, have one, if I have one line and its slope is two-fifths, the slope of the line perpendicular to it would be negative five-halves. So in terms of opposite reciprocal, the opposite comes from the fact that the first one started with a positive and the second one started with a negative. And the reciprocal is that I flip two-fifths to be five-halves. But if I was to multiply two-fifths times negative five-halves, I would come up with negative one. 